Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're talking about setting the height and width of your React application. I prefer to use Flexbox for this. However, I'm sure there are other methods. Today I will show you mine. A React application provides a few differences from just building HTML and CSS from scratch. We have to consider how a React application is structured. So let's begin with that. And we've got the index CSS open here on the left, and I've got the React app. This is the React JS blog that we have been working on lately in the Learn React tutorial series. This is here on my right. You can see it is centered, but it does have a width problem. We're using React Router to change the main content. I'll show you what I mean. When I click on Post, the width of the app changes just a little bit here. I have the max width set to 800. When I click on About, it even gets wider. So really the application is changing based on the content size in the main area. But let's look at the CSS I have. I'm importing a font at the top. I've got my reset. I've set a default font size here in the HTML element. And then in the body, I've set a min height of 100 units. And so it's at least the full height of the visible browser here. But then there's the app component, and we have the app class. And the width is set to 100%. As we look at the header and the footer, they're also set to 100% width here on line 37. And it's the same for the nav menu and all of the main elements that we change out here with uh, different classes. And they're all set to 100%. So why is the width changing? Well, we have to think about the structure of React applications. And let me pull up the file tree on the left here in Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to click on the index.js. And now I'll hide the file tree so we can see more of this. But what we often fail to consider, and at least I do, as or I did as a beginner with React, is that everything is still attached to a div that has an ID of root. So even though we have a component with an app class, our app component, it is still being inserted into this other div. So we have another container to consider. And that is why we are not seeing a consistent width here. We haven't set the width or done anything with that container with the ID of root. So let's go back to the CSS now. I'll briefly show the file tree. Click on the index CSS, hide the file tree, and here we are. And right here in between, we should do something between the body and the app class because the body will default to the width of the page, which is 100% without us even putting that in there. However, the app cannot expand to 100% width of the page because it's inside that div container with the ID of root and it is not set to expand. And we can right click on the page over here and choose Inspect, and we'll pull up DevTools. And now with DevTools open, and I highlight the body, you can see it has the full width of the page. But now when I highlight the div with the ID of root, you can see it does not have the full width of the page. So that's what we need to change. So instead of having the Justify Content Center and Align Items Center here in the body, we can make the body a flex, a display of flex, but then we want to go ahead and add the root ID, and we'll give this root ID not only a display of flex that justifies everything in the center with the content and align items, but we also know that the root div is a flex item because it's inside the body, and we can set it to grow. So it will expand up to the available width, which would expand it for the full page. So let's go ahead and save. And now that we've saved that, of course, it immediately expands and uses up the rest of that room. So if I pull this over a little bit, maybe we can get to where we have some extra. I can't get it wide enough there. I tell you what I'm going to do is expand the entire browser. So now we have some width on the left and the right because I have set a max width of 800 pixels here for the application. So now when I highlight div inside the dev tools, we see it is the full width of the page again. And now we have to expand that and highlight app. And we can see app stops at 800 pixels, but div with the ID of root is now 
the full width of the page just like the body is but we have to set that here and we have to let it grow if we use the flexbox approach that i'm using and now the app can expand up to the full 800 pixels that i have allowed in the code for it now if i bring this back and i can just close out dev tools here if we come down to the app and I get rid of this max width of 800 pixels, I'll just comment it out briefly, and now save, the application itself should expand, and it does, and it just fills the entire page. So that's what the max width does. It gives us that nice little margin, at least when we have a screen that is larger than a uh, tablet. I'll save that and put the margins back on the left and right so it stops at 800 pixels. And now let's see the difference if we remove this flex grow from the root, the div with the ID of root. I'll comment that out and save. And we can see a couple of things happen. One is it's no longer centered because we didn't put a justify center or a line item center. Either one of those did not go up here in the body. We removed that. So it's no longer centered. And then it doesn't grow. It doesn't expand to fill everything here. So we need it to grow. And then it will automatically be centered. And we can see the change here now. Now that we've discussed the width of the application, and I hope you have a better understanding of how that works, how a element can also be a flex item while it is still a parent, like this root div is, and we've set the display to flex, but it's also a flex item and it has a flex grow property here in the CSS. But now that we've discussed the width, let's quickly discuss the height as well, because once we're into our app component, all of these other components are within. We've got the header, the footer, the nav bar, and then all of the different main elements that change out when we click our links. And of course, notice now that the width stays consistent as we click between these now that we have addressed our div with the ID of root. So now the height, well, Flexbox defaults to a flex direction of row. So instantly inside the app component, we not only want to use a display of flex, but we want to tell it we're working with a column. And then it begins to stack everything up on top of each other where we have the header, nav, the different main elements here in the area, and the footer. The height of 100 viewport units set inside of the app component is really the one that takes over. So the one that I have up here for a min height in the body really isn't necessary. I can comment that out and we can save and we won't see a change because everything inside the app component makes the rest of the containers grow. So the div with ID of root and the body element itself will grow to accommodate the app. So really, I have my min height of 100 units here in the body just out of habit. It's not necessary for this application, but I usually include it. It's just one of the things I always start with. But the height that's really making things happen here is the 100 units, viewport units for the app component. Now, if we change this, and we don't set a height, it will just expand to the content once again. So we can save this, and now notice the footer goes ahead and gets pushed down because it grows. And if we go to the About page that doesn't have nearly the amount of content, we can see that it shrinks. And since we have set this to be justified in the center and align items in the center, it's completely centered right now instead of at the top and just shorter. So we really need this set height for the application. And the other thing we're doing is once again using flex grow and we're using it for all of the classes that apply to these different main elements, whether it's the new post, the about, or the feed here. And we can see that I believe in my CSS on 130 where, there we go, flex grow line 130. I've got the different classes here for the home feed, new post, post page, if we go to an individual page, that it goes ahead and grows this body out. And that's because it's a flex item, or each one of these are flex item, and we've set flex grow to one. So that goes ahead and expands the page. Notice we also have overflow-y set to auto, and that helps us with our feed. So the footer stays in place, and we're able to scroll the feed here in the main area.
I want to scroll back up really quickly and find the footer class that I set because, here it is, uh, there's an easier way to center things when you know you only have one thing to center, and that is with display grid, and you can place content center, and that's exactly what I do with the copyright notification here in the footer. So I've set that to a display of grid and placed the content center as well. This has been a very quick overview for how you can use the full width of the page and the full height, and of course align things in the center if you want to limit, like set a max width or even a max height. You can center things with Flexbox fairly easily, and as I mentioned here at the end, you can also center things with a grid display fairly easy. So it's not a full tutorial on Flexbox or grid, but when you're working with a React app, there's just a few extra considerations, and I know you may want that application centered, or you may want it to take up the full page, and you definitely want the pages that you use, say if you're changing with React Router like we are with this application, to have that consistent width, and you don't want your application to be an accordion and change widths based on the page that you go to. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.